Now we're going to be looking at feedback interconnections and also at state feedback. So in feedback interconnections, this is a common interconnection that we will have. This is a unity feedback configuration. Unity meaning that the feedback gain is just one. And then in this case, we have a compensator here, our plant here. We have various signals that are of importance, our, <clears throat> our reference or tracking input. This is the signal we want our output to follow. Uh, error signal is the difference between the reference and the output. Here's our control signal, our actuator input, and then our, our measured output. These are the things we're able to measure. So this is a kind of a standard. So for example, a PID controller uses this structure, um, but it's not the only structure. Another structure is the two degree of freedom control, where in, in a sense, I have a separate controller in, into which my R, my reference signal goes, and my Y. Okay, so I have two different controllers that I'm working with here. So sometimes we'll use one, sometimes we'll use another, and uh, so this is just another way of doing that. In general, I may have a disturbance entering my system, I may have um, a noise entering my sensor, so that's the sensor noise, and I have a reference. So in this case, I have three inputs to my system. And they, again, you may have different dimensions associated with these guys. In the interconnections, um, so in that interconnection, I have these different outputs and the various inputs. And so the, um, these are how the inputs relate to the output. So I have three inputs, three outputs. That gives me nine matrices. So these are nine transfer functions that I have. Some of these transfer functions have names, so the transfer function from U to F is called a loop transfer gain, and it's just given by the product of K and P. The transfer function from the disturbance to Y is called the output sensitivity function, SO, and it's given by this. The transfer function from W to Y is called the complementary sensitivity function, and it's given by this. I also have the input sensitivity function, which is very similar to the output sensitivity function, but notice it's just the, I have the opposite order of multiplication here. And then our system response is given by this expression. So these are some um, various maps from various inputs to various outputs. Some of these actually have names. We've seen some of these names before. The issue of well-posedness, and the question is, is this closed loop well-defined? And so in general, this is my H, this is my uh, H1, H2, and uh, so I have this configuration. So these are the state models for those, and these are the control signals. So notice U1 is a function of U2, U2 is a function of U1, and so we have these two relationships. We can solve, we can take these guys over to the other side and solve and factor out U1 and U2, and I get this matrix then. And so I can get control signals U1 and U2 from all of this if um, this matrix is invertible. Okay, so this can be uniquely solved if this matrix is invertible. Turns out if this matrix is not observable, then our system is said to be not well posed. So well posedness, which is kind of an odd expression, basically relates to whether or not the, all of this makes sense. And so if this matrix is invertible, that's equivalent to this matrix being invertible, which is equivalent to this matrix being invertible. And so all th those three of those are related. And so we would have external stability of this system if this transfer function from T involving H1 and H2 is stable. And so basically we have these four transfer functions. So the system is P-stable if this map is P-stable. And so basically all four of these transfer functions need to be stable. We've seen that before. So the issue of well-posedness is is our system, does that condition on the D matrices, is that satisfied? And if, um, so this condition, so that's the issue of well-posedness, and then the stability is related, is a, is a different issue. So notice that if either the D1 or the D2 is zero, then this is automatically satisfied. And we can see that either here or here. So they're automatically satisfied. So we can actually get this um, 
in some in specific cases um, so the issue here of all this is the, the, or the issue of well-posedness is um, does this interaction make sense that is the fact that I have a d1 and a d2 here gives me what's called an algebraic loop and Simulink will not even simulate a system like this with an algebraic loop so that's that's definitely an issue um, so and I actually will we'll, we'll see that in, in one of the upcoming uh, topic lectures so here's our external stability all four of those transfer functions need to be stable in general we may have a, a, a framework like this where I have different kinds of inputs entering in and different kinds of outputs into my system in which case I can have uh, a multiple multi-block transfer function so W would be for example disturbances noises that enter my system those are separate from U which is the control signal okay. in terms of outputs I have signals Z and generally we think of Z as being the signals we want to keep small in our system and Y is the set of signals that are um, the things that we can actually measure within the system so if we measure those things within the system then we can apply a controller to our system so notice in the process we may introduce sensor noise and then we have a controller and our controller also may involve a reference signal and so again we have multiple outputs and multiple inputs and so we have this new map that involves G and K uh, that we're working with so that's the that is the general feedback configuration and uh, so these are some of the issues that we deal with in this kind of feedback structure so next we're going to move on to talk about a specific kind of feedback called state feedback which is very different than what we've been seeing here